Cool. Thank you all for coming. I uh, appreciate you probably had a few beers last night and uh, it's early morning and I'm following a keynote, so uh, this will be great. Um, cool. So, uh, I actually get the slides to go, which we're working just moments ago. Uh, who are, yeah, okay, who am I? Um, so, uh, there's me. Um, I'm a technical account manager for Acquia, and uh, in practice that means uh, we end up working with uh, uh, some of our largest customers in region and with their scary problems, and uh, we come up with creative ways to solve them. And uh, you, know, you might ask what's they got to do with Cloudflare, and uh, we partner with them and we actually uh, white label their product in the loosest possible way. It is literally the Cloudflare interface. And we often end up advising customers on how to best manage their Cloudflare zones, uh, what features they should be looking to use, and uh, you know what's coming in the roadmap you know, and, and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, often it's quite fun in games to have one zone in Cloudflare and you know, use the interface for pointing and clicking. It's a whole other thing to have, uh, you know, a hundred zones or you know, a thousand zones, and you know, the challenges you start facing at scale are, are different. And uh, a little bit of a, a recap for you know those that have not don't know what Cloudflare is or where it came from is uh, in 2009, uh, a few people from Project Honeypot, which is uh, anti-spam service, I guess. Uh, they basically collected all the IPs of all the people sending silly emails and they were like, would it be cool if we could uh, use this against the spammers? Yeah, so essentially, you know, fight the war yeah, in reverse. Uh, so someone came up with a Skunkworks project, the best kind, and said, hey, let's make a little company called Cloudflare and we'll see how it goes. And uh, yeah, it's, I guess nowadays, you probably call them a bit more of a security and performance company. I don't want to call it Skunkworks. They've got rounds of funding. They've got hundreds of employees They're all around the world. And uh, yeah, how I best explain them is that they're a, uh, like a Swiss Army knife. You know, not the little ones. The they're all chunky ones. And uh, in this talk today, I'm not going to list all their features. Uh, we've only got 40 minutes. Uh, I'll just try to stick to the ones that have security implications. So the first one is uh, DNS. This is where, this is how the web works, right? Without this, it's all IP addresses. That's boring. Uh, so, Cloudflare, they have DNS and they power a lot of the world's DNS. Um, it's, yeah, the stats are pretty crazy. Um, so everyone's like, oh, how do I, how can I trust Cloudflare for my DNS? Well, actually, a lot of people already do, and uh, they have all the right buzzwords, DNSSEC, which I don't quite understand, but I, but I mean, does. Um, they have an SLA that I don't, I've never seen an SLA like this, but they have nine nine point in, point infinite nines, and yeah, whenever someone asks me, like, should I move my DNS to Cloudflare? I was like, well, what's your SLA for your DNS? If, can someone take it down? And every point of presence on their network has the DNS component. So if one was to go down, no biggie, you go to the next one, just like their CDN. And uh, someone's benchmarked it as actually the fastest uh, DNS as well. Um, and uh, you can also use it for a, um, a resolver as well with 1.1.1. So yeah, there's some really cool stuff happening there. And uh, it's got to happen. This is inspired from Troy Hunt uh, from last year's uh, uh, Drupal South. Um, so um, for, for a distributed denial of service attack, um, I normally explain this like your city has an eight lane highway coming in. It can support 200 cars an hour. What happens when 400 million cars show up? You know, like does anyone get into your city? Does anyone get out? <laughs> And you, you might have the best designed Drupal application. You know, it might, it might be fast as all hell. It might be PHP 7.2 with like Redis. And, and you're like, no one can take this down. You know, I've got a thousand threads. 
and then I say, oh, that's cute. Um, Cloudflare regularly stops uh, denial of service attacks that are in the hundreds of gigabits, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's faster than probably the NBN combined. Um, you can probably take down Australia's internet for that sort of um, power. But um, So when someone asks me, do I need DDoS protection, I normally answer, well, does it matter if your site goes down? And if the answer is no, then maybe you don't. But maybe people do care about your site. And maybe you do have customers. Maybe you make money. Maybe you have a reputation. You know, or maybe there's some legal reasons why you can't go down. Uh, these are all things to consider. And uh, they happen literally all the time. This is like a constant thing. It's not like, uh, maybe if I'm lucky, I won't get one. Uh, so some random uh, numbers I'll just chuck over the wall here. Uh, they've got a 20 terabit network, and this is just the numbers they say publicly. I don't know how old it is, whether it's still right. Just say it's a lot of bandwidth. And uh, as of today, they've got 155 data centers. And uh, in Australia, there's Perth, Melbourne, Sydney, Brizzo, and there's one in Auckland. Yeah. And there's, yeah, obviously stuff, stuff in Asia and US and other parts of the world too. And uh, uh, for all the nerds in the room, um, they use Anycast DNS, uh, which I did have a slide on, but I got told to take it out because it's too nerdy. But if you want to know about it, come talk to me after. Um, anyway, Anycast versus Unicast is a big difference between uh, Cloudflare and Akamai. And uh, I won't go into it and say which is better or worse, just say there's pros and cons, and Anycast is probably better. <laughs> and they have mitigations against UDP amplification attacks. Uh, for instance, if you ran a memcache server that was publicly accessible and then turned off UDP, which was defaulted to on as to not too long ago, then your memcache server could be used as a reflection point for a DNS, uh, a UDP amplification attack. So basically, attackers send small packet to you know, poorly configured stuff, which sends a really large response to a uh, spoofed IP that you've made up. So effectively, it's you know, you're the, the puppeteer commanding all these silly servers. And uh, it's a really effective way to take someone off the internet, it turns out. Uh, they also do uh, layer seven, so the HTTP flood, you know, that someone just gets out of a Apache bench and <laughs> what's it look like if I send a random number on a URL to you? And uh, they also have this feature, I haven't really used it in practice, but it seems kind of cool, but there's a button in the UI you can press if you think you're under attack. I mean, Cloudflare have automatic mitigations, but if you, you know, think you know better than that, you can uh, you know, put on the uh, Pandemic 2 uh, style response you know, and close down all the ports. Um, it's a fun game, by the way. Um, so IP rep. And uh, because uh, Cloudflare came out of Project Honeypot, it had this huge database of you know, who's good and who's bad. You know, effectively, Santa's naughty or nice list, right? And you know, kind of one of the features of having a WAF or a well-tuned uh, edge layer there is the ability to do automatic stuff, like not procedurally defined stuff, but you know, the special source. And uh, this is where this kind of comes in. So you can, in the UI, uh, kind of set an aggression level. Uh, which is like, how likely is the WAF rules to trigger based on the IP reputation? Medium is the default. If you're more paranoid, you go high. Uh, if you're like so-so, you can go low. You can turn it off if you're a masochist. And yeah, threat level on our per euro basis as well. <coughs> and this is so true. Like we. For the Australian Open, when it's live, you really can't do a release. It takes a long time. So instead, we had 50 odd page rules hit by the end of it. And uh, yeah, we, it, it solves the problem. The client's happy. And you come off looking like, uh, like a hero. Cheers. Um,
Uh, access, I won't speak too much about this one, but there is the facility if you do want to prevent access to certain parts of your site and you do use things like Okta or Google Auth or something like that, you can get Cloudflare to perform that authentication and then if they pass, let them through. And I guess it's quite niche, but some people make use of it and it's really powerful. And rate limiting. Uh, I normally explain this as the boundary when legitimate requests start becoming a problem. Uh, so you don't necessarily want to block them all, but you want some way to throttle them. And uh, uh, just a quick pick of it, but it's uh, highly configurable. You can say, I want only three logins per IP per hour. I want only two web form submissions per IP per day. And uh, you can say what action that happens when they exceed that, whether you get a capture, whether you block them, <coughs> whether you, uh, and what the timeouts for that are. So once we've triggered it, how long do they have to wait to you know, fix it up? And it also works with APIs. So if you want to return a 49 and JSON, all good. Um, so some good use, use cases for this. Uh, if you have a GSA and your GSA admin doesn't know what they're doing, and uh, <coughs> I've certainly come across these. Um, so we had a site that's been crawled twice, three times daily um, with a 100 thread count crawl and uh, when you've got 17,000 pages or something it's uh, just a lot of fun every day. And it's like why can't you just tune it to Crawlius? And they're like, hmm, <laughs> that person left. <laughs> so you've got a, a way here to, to manage them. Um, <coughs> say also you, you have content but you don't want someone to have all of your content uh, in one go. And uh, you know, we had an actual problem in the, the Gold Coast Games where athletes had profiles online which had a lot of fairly personal stuff about them, like nicknames, favourite cat, you know, like. And you're like, well, you know, to visit one, it's fine, right? But we had someone that's like visiting them all, and we're like, hang on, that's a problem. So, yeah, effectively, they got cut off uh, from doing that. They also had a user agent of Phantom JS. <laughs> Helps to narrow it down. Thanks for that. <laughs> Not making a real user agent team. <laughs> and yeah, I mentioned that earlier. Um, custom firewall rules. Uh, and I normally explain this as because you ultimately know your app better than Cloudflare. So why not codify that? And if you're talking Drupal, then here's a few rules to kind of get you like thinking about what you can do. This is my favorite, by the way. If you like regex, then <laughs> you're my people. Um, anyway, so this will block WP login, WP admin, WP cron, WP, I don't know, just WP all the things. And uh, for every site I look after, I get there's always a few hundred requests per day for this um, this type of stuff. And because it ends in PHP, Drupal does not do fast for it four. It does a bootstrap and it goes, oh, I need to give you a 404 page, I'll be able to render that, deliver that. And then all your caching servers go, well, it's a 404. I can't cache it for very long. So yeah, rinse and repeat the cycle. And it may seem only like a few hundred requests, but it all adds up. You can obviously extend this to WP admin slash WP content, WP includes, WP JSON. Another doozy. And you can blame Microsoft for this. I do. 
uh, some sites just like to phone home and uh, they do this with the auto discover protocol I don't really understand it except that it forces Drupal to do dumb stuff very very often and this is really effective as it turns out as a way to mitigate that and not that I'm bagging on Microsoft I sound like I am but I promise I'm not uh, if you happen to have Office 365 or Skype for Business within an organization, I don't understand why, but they'll send post requests to the slash of your, your domain. Uh, lots of them. Every user, every time they open up Excel, every time they open up PowerPoint, it sends a stupid request off. And if your organization has tens of thousands of people and they have access to I don't know how many apps and they say go to work on Monday morning at 9 a.m., and then you get 10,000 post requests to your homepage. And then you're like, oh, that was silly. Um, so yeah, this rule, um, you can, this one you can see a bit more of the ands and the ors kind of sort of coming in. And uh, yeah, you can kind of make these quite complicated. Use agent blocking, because why not? Um, yeah, so. There's a bot called Ahrefs bot or something. It's a stupid SEO bot. I, no one I know pays for it, yet it crawls really insane URLs that don't exist. I don't know where it gets them from, but um, yeah, here's how you mitigate that. And we we used to have a large customer. You may or may not know them. I got um, We save 10% of the total number of Drupal requests by coming up with a blacklist of user agents. And 10% is not something to snigger at. Uh, WAF rules? Haven't really talked about WAF yet. Yeah, so this is actually the part that Cloudflare helps you with. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so Cloudflare constantly evolve this list as new threats come out on the network that they see. So someone else getting attacked Another site helps to improve your site. And they are constantly turning them off and on, and you know, as they see these botnets and sort of new threat uh, vectors kind of come through. And uh, who remembers Drupal getting 2, 4 a.m., March 28? You know, hey, we had a fun time at that time in the morning. It's, a, it's, it's really good if you're in the US because it's like sunny afternoon, but in Australia it's all like terrible. And this is what it was, uh, and that was my response. And it was, it was actually lower than that originally. But if you look at the, the date, and then you look at that date, you start to go, hmm, that's pretty good. <laughs> so say for whatever reason you slept in, and say it was exploited immediately. Luckily, you know, those two things didn't happen for me, but um, <laughs> if you had Cloudflare, then you were protected anyway. I'm not saying don't update your Drupal app. I'm just saying if you forget, <laughs> we, got a, we had a Drupal site running drupal.org.nz and uh, it got hacked because no one was looking after it, right? But if we had Cloudflare, it would have been a problem. <coughs> so zone lockdown. Very similar to Access, except this is not through SSO um, on another provider. This is purely IP based. And uh, I won't get too much into it, but so much to say is that I recommend using editorial domains, not your dub 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 main domain. Split it off and hide your edit domain. You can even use a non standard domain if you want to be even cooler and take user and admin off your primary site. Uh, lock it down by IP or uh, user page rule. You know, there's so many things you can do because ultimately what it comes down to is you can't log into Drupal if you can't find a thing. And it's so true. You know, Two-factor auth is nice, but you know, if you can't get to the login page, I can give you the admin credentials. do not matter. Um, workers, uh, I'm not going to talk about this too much, but if this does trigger something, come, come chat to me after. But it's essentially codifying your business logic into the edge. You can write arbitrary JavaScript. You can use 
Node and Webpack and you know, do some really cool stuff. And it runs on the each edge server. And you've got access to the request. You can manipulate it. You've got access to the response from the origin. You can manipulate it. You can do things like aggregate multiple backend queries into a single kind of response. You can do things like uh, edge site includes. You can do things like token replacements and uh, cache, you know, derivative changing. It's like Lambda at the edge if you, anyone's uh, AWS inclined. Uh, SSL, everyone, uh, hands up if uh, anyone likes in like buying SSL certs, renewing them, going through procurement, and um, adding oh, adding a new SAN to an existing cert. Oh, so good times. Um, so life's too short, right? If you're spending any of your time, I mean any, like two minutes a year doing SSL, you're doing it wrong. And yeah, I've actually got a customer right now that is currently paying some Mantec a lot of money per year, like, yeah, and they just recently went through that thing with Google and Google didn't want to trust their certs, they had to revoke and reissue and oh my god. <sighs> yeah, anyway, um, so uh, Cloudflare will give you free SSL, not EV, just DV, um, but that's fine, it gets you the green padlock, uh, that's what you need, and it will save you money, it will save you time. And it, the bigger your organization gets, the harder this problem is. And uh, yeah, anyway, the New Zealand Herald, which is a large newspaper site in uh, New Zealand, uh, they went offline for six hours because someone forgot the SSL certificate. And it's just, it's just dumb shit. Um, so some of the tech bits, um, it supports TLS 1.3, which is pretty cool from a security and performance perspective. Uh, with optional zero RTT, which you know some people think it's an attack vector, so you can you know decide how you want to do that or not do that or not. Uh, but critically, it does HSTS and uh, automatic HTTPS redirects for you as well. So it offloads those Drupal modules. You can get rid of them. You don't need them. And then you might ask me, but, but Sean, what about my origin? I want to have it encrypted back to my origin. Then I say, well, look at this sweet slide. And uh, they, so Cloudflare will give you uh, what's called an origin CA cert, which is effectively Cloudflare signed. It's not going to be trusted by a browser, but Cloudflare will trust it. And you can add each one of your zones to it. So if you've got five zones, you can have five SANs on your uh, origin CA cert if you've got the one back end. Uh, effectively, it's encryption and trust between Cloudflare and your origin. And again, no cost. And it's valid for 15 years. So you probably need to replace it, but only you know, every so often. Oh, if you don't care about trust and just want encryption, then you can do that in Cloudflare too. And I'm going to try to hurry through these last few slides, but. Um, CDN offload rate does have uh, impact for security. Um, and here's a quote I just made up. But my favorite origin is a boring origin, right? It does nothing. It just sits there and uh, you know, has a couple requests every now and then. And uh, yeah, so find and fix your 404s. Like, make it something that you just do and work out your caching strategy. Don't just go with whatever the developer chose from the drop-down. Like, use cache tags and maybe invalidate them. And here's a tiny example. 99.925% um, cache offload rate for a site that had 4.3 billion requests in two weeks. And that can be you. <laughs> it's not hard. You can get there. And you might ask, how do I get there? Well, there's a feature called Enterprise Log Share, which enables you to suck out the full request logs for your zone for a time period. You can then do things like cat them. And I hope they're semi-readable. 
uh, because it's in JSON format, and you start thinking, is there a tool that works with JSON and shell? Uh, this is real, by the way. <laughs> um, so here's some JQ. If you haven't heard of JQ, do yourself a favor, go learn JQ. It's so good. And so you can just basically use JQ to analyze stuff in there. And because the full request fields are in here, including if your origin was involved, you can start doing some really cool queries. And another cool quote. Someone, yeah, maybe we should, like, I mean, JQ is kind of cute, but what if we want to do it, like, at a much bigger scale? And uh, I hope this is going to work. Uh, maybe it will. <coughs> I can't actually see my monitor. Um, nope. <laughs> that broke it. Anyway, I'll, I'll just talk about it. There's not much time left anyway. But I wrote some tooling that um, effectively is a Symfony console app and it will draw the logs down and analyze them and give you an HTML report. And then based on that, you can then, you know, perform iterative improvement. And uh, I wish I had the rest of my slides up. But um, yeah, anyway, so if you get into a culture of continuous improvement, and I'm going to steal a line from Amin here and say Kaizen, it's this uh, methodology of continuous tiny improvement. So find the biggest annoyance in your site, fix it, whether it be 404s, whether it be some WordPress bot, some Ahrefs SEO thing you don't use, and put a fix in, and then measure it, and then find what's the next thing. And that's how you get to that cache uh, offload rate. And that's all I've got to say today. Nice one. Thanks ever so much, Sean. Well, five minutes for questions. Um, any questions from the audience? Don't be shy. Hi, it's great talk. Um, so there's most of the stuff there you're showing enterprise sort of level, or how far can you get with free plans? Um, the free plan has limitations. The business plans have limitations. They're all documented on its site. Um, like free has three page rules total. Enterprise has a hundred. Uh, you need enterprise logs. You want enterprise log sheet. You need enterprise zone. Uh, I don't have all the specifics, but I'd say it's 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 te it's tiered, right? Um, and some of the features like workers are consumption based pricing. Um, but I mean, the numbers we're talking about for an enterprise zone are not going to be mind bogglingly large. So. Anyone that's kind of questioning the cost, I'd say, well, look at the value. And that's how I like to swing those conversations with management. Yeah, but even free tier gives you DDoS protection. So if you have nothing and no money and you've just got a little, little site sitting somewhere, then free tier is, yeah, God bless them. <laughs> Any other questions? One. Here we go. <laughs> hey there, what's the API like? Amazing. It tools against it? So everything in Cloudflare is API first. Mm -hmm. The UI uses the API. So everything you can do with point and click, you can do with uh, with tooling. And yeah, it's. I use the API a lot. Um, I find problems with the API, and they fix them. It's really good. It's a. Um, yeah, I'm probably the, one of the top consumption users of the API worldwide, so. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Just to extend to that, because Sean and I have worked on API tooling, there is some stuff up in GitHub that uh, Symfony apps that you can use to, um, to connect to the API and add zones and that kind of thing. Hello, sorry if I missed that part, I wasn't here all the time, but uh, did you address the trouble with the free tier and uh, 
uh, routing between Telstra and the rest, like our club, are not having a hearing agreement with Telstra and Australia in place, and traffic is going via Singapore. Yeah, so that's one of the pro. The, there's pros and cons to Anycast versus Unicast, and sometimes Anycast gets it wrong um, because it's based on um, the, you know, the fastest possible route, which if you don't have pairing, um, may not be the most optimal route. So all I know is Cloudflare is working to get local pairing with ISPs in the countries that they can. Um, I'd be surprised if they haven't, you know, they're not working towards something like that. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of the nature of it and yeah. Uh. Okay, thank you, Sean. Now, where did my bloody browser?